All right. So let's let's talk about um, what we're not real worried about, which is the back line. Um, I really love what they did with filling in the holes from, I would say, a lot of local youth or or non-international youth that we've added on the back line in the last two years. Literally, you look at 80 percent of our back line are draft picks from last year and this year. And so all it was was how do we fill in with some more experienced players? Um, I hate losing Carlo. Uh, Pedro Imoff looks like the real deal, but it's really hard for me to judge anything from uh, lower level or what is like D1 rugby in Argentina. It's probably higher level than here, quite a bit higher level. It, I, don't know. I really have no idea. I mean – for the three that we have at scrum half, we saw a bit of Tom Brusati last year. We don't know if he's here or not. I, I haven't. I th- the, the, the thing is, we haven't heard that he signed anywhere. And we haven't heard that he's not signed with the Jackals. So, I mean, at this point, it's just assuming that he's coming back because who else are they going to have? They've got to have yeah. three scrum halves. And I don't see a third one on the roster right now. So... I- I don't know much about Devereaux Ferris, who's come in. Uh, he was the trade for Kale Hodgson with Nolan Gold. Um, yep. Kale was another really solid guy that kind of played utility back. He could kind of play a little bit anywhere. Um, it was kind of disappointing to see him go, but... Um, I think they saw the the writing on the wall with Carlo. Um, I, to be fair, Carlo's going to get to go play for, like, one of the greatest South African coaches of all time. <laughs> so... All right. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that, right? It's like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a, sort of a homecoming for him and go play with all the South Africans that are migrating down to Houston, um, including Honko, the the uh, Terminator. So, um, oh God, I, that's gonna be so bad. They're gonna be scary. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's the it's the Pumitas versus the uh, the saber baby. box. Yeah, saber box. The saber box. <laughs> Uh, so with uh, uh, Pedro starting now, he is getting older. Um, this could be an opportunity for him to coach um, up here and get some more exposure, maybe. Uh, maybe, yeah. And then you've got Debro Ferris, who is a lot of experience playing at NOLA. Um, he was their starting scrum half for several years now, really. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, a very good scrum half. I, nothing. From watching him, nothing super special, but he's a kid that's been playing since he was a, a kid. He was uh, he's a Kiwi and he's been playing forever. So um not totally surprising they're gonna go find a guy who's got a lot of experience. Um fly half. We're bringing back um Carols and Carlsa. Carlsa. You're you're the you're the uh the, the uh, South, South African, African, African yeah, yeah. uh language uh uh, perfect. Yeah, it's uh, Adrian Carlsa, uh, Alejandro Torres, yeah, Matias Caramuti, and, and Martin Elias. Elias. So um, Elias actually, um, he's a really, really experienced uh, um, Argentinian. Uh, he's, I don't think he's been capped at um, the 15s level. Um, he has been playing for the Pumitas for several years, and they think extremely highly of him. Um, I think there's an expectation that he could be capped within the next year um, with the Pumas and uh, be playing uh, as a fly half of the future for them. So uh, this is a guy really to watch um, if, you know, something happens with Adrian or uh, they slide um, Elias out to centers or fullback or someone. We don't really know yet. I think part of the thing with the, the backs is we know where these guys have played in the past, but the way that you know these guys have been drafted picked up um the guys that are returning there's not a hundred percent certainty of what position they'll be playing i think we're pretty certain about which guys are going to get playing time though definitely um we we've we've got four extremely capable fly halves that can play who would probably start anywhere uh, else um, and like I said, hopefully we find out that maybe Elias, maybe we find out these guys can play secondary positions that we didn't know about. Right. Um, to me, you can never have enough guys to kick the ball. 
Exactly. Um, I think that's the one thing we're going to see this year that was different from the last. last I think we kick a lot more. more. I think we kick a lot more for for, a lot for penalties, more. and I think we just yeah. Yeah. And not just that, but I think, you know, 5022 rule or law in place, I think we're going to see a lot of attempts towards that. We're, We've got guys that can do it. We've now, got guys are we going to get into the volleyball kicking? Um, I I kind of hope not, but I have a feeling there is going to be some of that. That's not the MLR way, but it, that is definitely the Argentinian way. This is the Southern Hemisphere way, right. definitely. <laughs> it's how people below the equator, That's we like to kick the ball back and forth quite a bit. Um, um, so God, half, yeah, I, I think fly half is really strong. Um, oh, fact, definitely. I think it's no so way. strong that we're going to see some of those guys play in other positions. I'm almost certain that yeah. if they don't start in one of those other positions, they'll be coming in and playing at some of those other positions. Centers is really interesting. It's, I, I think it's the most clogged position on the roster. Um, you've got a lot of guys who can play elsewhere, but haven't played elsewhere a ton. So Marcus Moroni uh, got him from Houston. So another Argentinian pulled up from Houston. Um, he's a guy who has a lot of experience in the centers, but has played some fullback um, and obviously played wing. Uh, but as a guy who's, who really is a true, truly a center, um, I think it's very interesting. They they could keep him at center, but with the other guys we have in the centers. It's certainly possible that they could move him to fullback or wing. I I have not seen a lot because he's not super active on social media. But Dinky, the the GM last yeah. year that we brought in, um, obviously a bit out of shape last year, but a damn wrecking ball when he had the ball. He would he's just an, bust he is an outside center in MLR if there ever was one. Yeah, I mean, and just the biggest grin on his face the whole time. You had the combination of him and the Samoan International that did not return this year as well. Um and it was odd man like he he came in uh he doesn't have the greatest mastery of the English language. He just kind of smiles a lot when you talk to him. Yeah. But God, man, like that wild hair, and just, you know, a <laughs> bit of a gut and he just get the ball. He just he, he didn't have the best handling skills. But God, if he didn't look like he was having fun out there, hopefully they've got him in camp. He's getting on the bike. They got I, him doing I, bikes. I, with I'm on with that. Get him fit. If you can get him fit enough to even play wing, just throw him out on the end and just throw He's him the ball and let him scary. roll. <laughs> really scary at wing. <laughs> um, and then uh, they've brought in uh, the Namibian, who really, I think, is uh, USA eligible. Uh, Matsvita, he was drafted uh, as part of the collegiate draft. Um, he looks very capable. In fact, I believe he played more fly half than he played anything else in college. But physically, he looks to me like a uh, inside center. I mean, he's, okay. he's, he's built, but he's uh, very skilled. Um, he, he looks like a guy who's going to move off of fly half and, and, um, can do a lot of damage in the middle with a quick step. Um, Tidwell and Hager to me look very similar players, very physical outside backs. Although, um, Hager again is a guy who played a lot of fly half, um, but also some fullback, but I think I peg him as much more of a center than anything else. Um, Campbell Johnstone returning, man. The first, uh, if, the first if he, try scorer. If he if he can figure out the kicking game, if he can figure out how to be in a, a really effective kicker, he looks to me like a prototypical uh, fullback. Yeah, he could move to fifteen. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I I, agree. I love having him in the centers. He's a good passer and everything. But man, uh, with his size and and skill set, if he can figure out how to regularly kick well, I'd love to see him at fifteen. I liked seeing uh, Campbell with Trinder and London last year, both veterans, obviously Chad yeah. London finally hanging up the boots, it seems, uh, for the chiropractor business. But I think uh, that's probably what made Campbell Johnson too, so special to me because he was a guy that could work with both of those guys really, really yeah. well. Um, we saw Trinder go out with injury, so we had London coming in, and it was kind of like, uh, almost like the, uh, the the kid with the grandpa, you know, like, come on, grandpa, let's go play some <laughs> rugby. And he would play very, very, and they fed off of each other so well. Yeah. yeah. Like it was like his, 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 the, he would amp it up and they would amp it up to his level. And it was like, 
you saw some excitement at centers with those with with him definitely yeah. but i think you're right i think if he can get a good boot on him move him back to fullback man because he's got the passing ability down like yeah. i don't have any question that he's going to be able to offload the ball properly if he gets a deep kick and with his high beat be and, to... and ability in the air i just think yeah. it's a win-win if you can get him back there uh the question is especially with all these argentinians is like I the second best boot on the team, I feel like is gonna end up at at fullback. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. that's kind of I mean, that is the Argentinian way is is not only do all their backs kick, but you have your best kicker is a fly half. Your next best kicker is at fullback, and that's just how you roll. And then it's usually the wing is after that, like their 14 yeah. will be yeah. their their exactly. third option. And um, I, I and can then, see, I don't um JP Aguirre yeah. he, even though he is um, Argentinian born, um, he is a USA um, capped. I, I don't know if he's capped. He's been in camp. Um, he is eligible for sure. Um, now he's older, um, but an experienced back and uh, another guy who can kind of play anywhere along the back line, but has played in the centers most of the time. Yeah, he uh, another guy that got a little bit of time last year, got a try uh, in the jersey, and uh, was a pretty exciting one there with uh, – we were pretty deep in the end, and it was a really long pass from Carlo, I believe, out to him yeah. wide, and he was able to get in. And uh, it was obviously an exciting try because we were, weren't getting a whole lot of those no, last year. But it was, um, it was a little rough. It's, uh, but it's good, to, like I said, to have him coming in, coming back. Uh, we saw some guy on Reddit like posted a photo. I don't know who the guy is on Reddit. Um, I don't. I. Yeah, anyways, we won't say who it is, but posted a photo from a photo shoot, and it looked like that was JP in the photo. Model yeah, I agree. I believe that was JP and like uh, Mr. Model. But should have been Tucci, man. Tucci was on the runway this summer, <laughs> man. We saw Tucci on the run. Oh, JP's a pretty good looking guy himself. Don't. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. whoa. He got so excited. Easy. I kicked the table. I was so excited, man. 